Hi, I'm Randy from Glacier Ware. Uh, one of the most common asked questions from, asked by people that we uh, sell pelts to is how to stretch or block their fur once they purchased it in order to make something out of it. It's also one of the most common mistakes made uh, in the fur industry. Your amateurs will actually buy a pelt and just lay a pattern on it and make something out of it. Well, you can't really do that because when the fur is, t is tanned, it'll shrink 15 to 20 percent. So what'll happen if you just lay the pattern on and cut the pattern piece, eventually that will stretch and it won't be stable. Uh, the easiest example to show you is that if you do not stretch a fur and you cut a sleeve for a coat, as you continually bent your elbow, sooner or later you're going to get the stretch and you'll get a sag. By taking to stretch out and blocking the pelt, there's nothing to stretch. So we're going to show you right from the start how to do this. We'll start with a coyote. The first thing you do is we use a furrier's knife, which is available on our website for sale. It's a diagonally cut razor blade. You go into the center of the pelt, holding the blade upwards under your index finger. And you cut right down the center of the pelt. And then I'll grab the lower jaw here and then just cut right to it. You never want to cut from the first side because then you'll cut hair. Then we take the legs, turn them inside out, cut up the center, turn the other leg, cut up the center. Okay, then we go right behind the ears. That off, go to the base of the tail. Take that off. Then what you do is you take a pen and you find the center. Pretty easy because the hairs will be going straight, not to the right or the left where the center is. You mark it, go to the neck, and you can do the same thing. If you look here, you'll see the center is right there mark your centers. Now we're going to show you how to do this at home so the easiest way a sponge in some water and you soak your pelt. Now I'm noticing here there's a little piece that came unsewn so we're going to go over the sew machine, sewing machine and repair that. It's a fur sewing machine. A little bit different stitch instead of being up and down, it's a side stitch. Here we are. Okay, again, we're just using a household sponge, water. We're going to soak the whole pelt up. Make sure it's all saturated. Okay, now we've waited 15 minutes. It gets another coat. And this one's just, you're just getting the, uh, the spots that were kind of absorbed and just an aid in getting more stretch. Now, uh, when you first start, it might be easier for some people to take a yardstick and just lay from your center line at the neck to your center line at the base of the tail and make a straight line. I'm not going to do this, but it allows you when you're stretching, as you'll see, to make sure you're not pulling or pushing more on one side or the other. If you do that, the grots in here, the center of the pelt, might end up looking like a C. And uh, that's not what you want. You want to keep this straight. Now you can use a variety of different materials to uh, to stretch on or tack it out on. I'm just showing what's easiest for you at home. So we're just using a piece of plywood and a common stapler. And uh, what you, so what you do here is you're going to stretch a little bit between your fingers at the center of the neck where your center line is. Put it on the center line. There's a line that's drawn right down the center of this board. And we're going to tack it in the center. And then I go from side. Now you're going to pull it and staple you generally get three staples and you're going to pull a little bit harder because there was nothing 
opposing it when you went on that side. So you pull a little harder on this side so that you end up with a straight line. Then we're going to go right here in between. This would be like the center of the, the throat on each side. Then we're going to come down here to the base of the tail. We're going to pull that. You don't want to overstretch, but you want to make sure you get all the stretch out. Tack that down. We're going to go to the rear legs. Two staples. And then we'll go from here. Here, here. You want to make sure that you're kind of keeping a straight line here. Okay, now we're going to go back up. And pull with the neck. Now, because of the legs have this little bit of extra, you're going to have to pull up at almost a 90 degree angle so that you don't have a lot of wrinkles there. Let's go do the other side, making sure you still have a straight line here. This one's got a little bit of a repair here. You have to put a little bit more pressure on just to get it straight. You want to take that tab there, pull it up at 90 degrees like we did on the other side. Tack here. Now we'll go leg. This is going go rather quickly. Staples are about two inches apart. And you'll notice when I do this other end, I'm pulling a little bit harder again, trying to keep this line straight. I'm pushing right against my thumb with the stapler so I go right to the outside edge of the pelt. And there we are. Now this will go till it's dry. It can be drummed after it's dried or uh, put in a dryer at home on an air cycle, no heat, with a, you know, a sneaker or a dryer ball just to help soften the leather a little bit. And then it's ready to trace your pattern on and cut. Now we're doing a beaver. It's already gone through its first soak. I'm gonna hit it the second time. Beaver is very similar. We'll show you the subtle differences. So we leave the head on with the with the beaver. Of course, this is the base of the tail. Again, the, so the nose is center. We'll go on each side of that. On each side of here. We'll find the center of the base of the tail. Put this down. One on each side here. Now we're ready. So we'll go to the top right, the left hand edge. And we get about three staples. Again, I'm pulling but not too tightly. Now when I get here, a little bit more pressure. So now that we've got it to this point, I'll take this, pulling it about a 45 degree angle, and stretch. I use my legs right against the board so it holds it stable, I can get a little more pressure. Two there, and it fits here. Now we'll come back down on each side. It's going closer to the edges because the beaver is wider at the bottom than it is. And there you are. The beaver is ready to dry. So this will just give you an example. These coyotes were previously stretched. This coyote was. But this is once it's off the board, we use an upholster's staple puller. And uh, the staples are just lifted right off the board, pried off. You can use a pair of pliers or screwdriver if you want at home, or just buy one of these. Uh, and then there's the beaver, all finished. And as you can see, there's no stretch left can't pull them anymore. Now when the, before one is stretched, just give you an example. 
So here's the neck you can see. Lots of stretch. So by not stretching, you're losing 20% of the material you have available to you. And it's much more difficult to work with and not stable at all. Now to brush, we just use a pet brush, wire hair pet brush. You use your thumb to hold the fur back and you pull the fur out from under your thumb with the brush as you brush. Now the whole pelt will have to be brushed this way. And basically it's ready to make something out of. Thanks for viewing our uh, fur blocking video. I do want to stress the importance of using commercially tanned pelts only. Uh, this, by having them commercially tanned, it ensures the quality of the leather. Uh, it's important to get lots of stretch from your pelts. And uh, home tan pelts just don't have the, the stretch or the quality that's required to make a garment. Uh, we recommend using Tabari LTD out of Passaic, New Jersey as your tanner. Uh, thank you. Hopefully we'll have more videos to come. Uh, the next one should be a grading video on furs. Thank you.